atypical cervical vertebrae. This is the first of the three cervical vertebrae that are considered atypical. This is the first one, which is also known as the atlas. Atlas is composed of two different structures that we haven't seen before on any of the vertebrae previously described. The anterior arch and the posterior arch. When anterior and posterior arches come together, there would be a big bony mass that is known as the lateral mass of the atlas. Here is the lateral mass on the right and this is the one on the left. The lateral masses of the cervical vertebra number one appear to be quite solid and quite thick. There is no surprise in that finding because the upper surface of the lateral masses is going to make a contact with the underside of the occipital bone of the skull and will form a joint between atlas and the occipital bone known as the atlantoaxial joint. Upper surfaces of the lateral mass are shaped in a concave form so they are somewhat elliptical and for that reason they would be a perfect match for parts of the occipital bone that we call the condyles of the occipital bone. We also use the same term and define articular surface on the upper side of the lateral mass as the condyle. We need to take a look at the underside of the cervical vertebra number one and to see that there are additional two articular surfaces on the lateral mass. However, they appear to be much smaller and flatter. They are known as the inferior articular processes and articular surface itself is known as the facet due to the fact that it is quite straight and flat as the articular surface. Additional features of C1 vertebra are as it follows. On the anterior arch there is a small bump which is known as the anterior tubercle. On the posterior arch, at the area where we would normally expect to find spinous process, we don't have one. Instead there is also a small bump which is known as the posterior tubercle of the posterior arch of the atlas. Transverse processes offer us the same familiar opening, the transverse process foramen, and although the transverse processes are a bit shorter, they also have the anterior and the posterior tubercle at their ends. Same finding could be seen on the opposite side of the vertebra that shows also anterior and the posterior tubercle of the transverse processes. The transverse process foramen that we have seen on all seven cervical vertebrae would allow vertebral artery to ascend through the neck and after it passes through the transverse process foramen of the first cervical vertebra, the artery itself will move backwards and then will cross over the posterior arch of the atlas. This area could be identified as the sulcus which means a groove for vertebral artery. In that case vertebral artery will be positioned perfectly well to advance itself further up through the foramen magnum of the occipital bone and reach the cranial vault. One can surely observe that size and shape of vertebral foramen that we have seen here on the cervical vertebra number one is completely different compared to anything else we have seen so far. It appears to have anterior, narrower part, and then the posterior part widens up quite dramatically. You also notice that there is no body of the cervical vertebra number one, which truly makes it very different compared to anything else inside the spinal column. Why is it like this? We will find out in a moment once we bring the second cervical vertebra into the picture. Second cervical vertebra that we're going to describe together a little bit later on 
would have this most prominent upward projecting process, which is known as the dense of the second cervical vertebra or dense axis. Dense axis, essentially some anatomists consider it to be a missing body of the C1 vertebra. But when we place the C1 vertebra on the top of the C2, we will find out that the interior part of the vertebral foramen essentially is designed to accept dents of the second cervical vertebra to fit in and these two vertebrae will be able to form a nice joint that will allow rotation of the first cervical vertebra. The joint itself is named atlantoaxial joint. For the obvious reason of assembling a joint between C1 and C2 vertebra, we would expect to find small but important articular surface on the posterior aspect of the interior arch of cervical vertebra number one. This is the interior arch of C1 and when we place the bone under a different angle we can see on its posterior side nice round smooth facet that'll make a contact with the interior aspect of dense axis. That is yet another important feature that C1 vertebra needs to offer. Facet for the interior aspect of dense axis. This additional view to first and second cervical vertebrae from the above is there to help us understand meaning of the tubercles that will be also located on the inside aspect of lateral masses of C1 vertebra. In order to stay stable and to disallow that cervical vertebra number one moves too far forward relative to C2 vertebra, between two tubercles of the lateral masses here and here, we would have placement of the transverse ligament of atlas that will actually go behind dense axis and will prevent any unwanted movement of C1 forward relative to C2. Should this ligament not function properly, there would be a massive damage that excessive movement of C1 vertebra relative to C2 could make to the spinal cord. This is the second cervical vertebra. Its proper name is axis. We have seen already second cervical vertebrae in a previous section when we were describing the joint that is formed between C1 and C2. So let's take a look at those extra features that we're going to find on C2 vertebra and for what reason we will also consider it to be atypical cervical vertebra. First of all, we have to accept that C1 did not have the body. Here is the body of C2 vertebra seen from the anterior side. On its superior aspect, as indicated earlier, there would be a major projection directed upwards that is known as the dense axis. Dense axis will have two articular surfaces, one on its anterior side and through this facet dense axis will make direct contact with the anterior arch of the atlas. Surprisingly enough on its posterior aspect there is a smaller articular surface that will make contact between dense axis and the transverse ligament of atlas which will go across also being part of the joint. Other features of C2 vertebra are going to be quite comparable to other features we already highlighted. There are superior articular processes with flat articular surfaces known as facets in order to make additional contact with the underside of lateral masses of C1 vertebra. Here's the transverse process better seen from the above and here is the transverse process foramen on the right side of this vertebra and same findings on the left. Here are the pedicles 
here are the laminae and here we find short yet bifid spinous process of the second cervical vertebra. Seeing it from the above, we observe vertebral foramen. The third and last atypical cervical vertebra is cervical vertebra number seven, which is also known as the vertebra prominence. Here we have the spinous process of C5, here is the spinous process of C6, and here is the spinous process of C7 vertebra, for which it has been named vertebra prominence. It's not only longer than spinous processes of other cervical vertebrae above, but it also shows signs of transition towards group that will follow, group of thoracic vertebrae. Notice that it is not bifid any longer, and it is much more solid and horizontally oriented, something that will be a good match for first vertebra found inferior to it, that is, first thoracic vertebra. If we remove C5, and then we remove C6 vertebra as well, we will find out that other features of cervical vertebra number 7 is, as we expect, there is a body with uncinate processes. The underside of the vertebral body is a little bit more flat in order to be a better match for a flat upper surface of first thoracic vertebra. Transverse processes are showing less present and less prominent anterior and posterior tubercles. And the position of orientation of articular processes is also being better match for thoracic vertebrae that will follow.